and welcome to Theory Craft, the channel that likes to poke holes in ideas more than Jason does with his machete in people. But here we are. This is my solo episode today discussing the Transformers universe that Michael Bay has been making in the past few years. We've had about six movies so far, we've now got some sort of prequel series in terms of Bumblebee, but also the next continuation, which is Rise of the Beasts. And while I do have my speculations with prequels, I do hope it does make this a bit more of a cohesive universe, although I just don't like prequels. The main issue with prequels, as it always will be, is that it's time constrained around the universe that it's already pre-built around. I understand if they are trying to build the universe that they have in terms of characters just to stretch the universe more, but prequels don't always help out with that situation. Although I am quite curious as to how it's going to play out. For all I know so far, the film is obviously a sequel to the Bumblebee movie, which is meant to be a prequel to the original Transformers movie so far. The only thing that I can come across so far in terms of what we got for characters is obviously Peter Cullen coming back as Optimus Prime, who else could it be? But weirdly enough, we have Ron Perlman as Optimus Primal. For those of you who are wondering what's the difference between the two, it's around about the early 2000s that we had Beast Wars, an amazing series that I used to love watching when I was a kid, probably one of the early on CGI computerized animation series to date, and basically used the premise of an alternate reality of Transformers where they crash landed on Earth back when it was the prehistoric times where there was no machinery, it was all animals, dinosaurs, giant beasts, whatever you want to sort of think up in terms of animalistic ideas. And of course, Optimus Prime, for whatever reason, didn't survive the trip, but he ended up creating a new version of himself called Optimus Primal, which basically took on the shape-shifting look of a primate or gorilla, whatever you want to imagine. And so you had his ragtag team of Maximals instead of Autobots, and then you had the Predacons instead of the Decepticons. Predacons typically took on more insect, more sort of vicious animals, if that makes any sense. And while I never understood why they, the insects always seem to be these gigantic things, the Maximals always seem to be down to the size of what the animal they scanned should be. So, say, Gorilla would be the size of Gorilla, and Cheetah would be the size of Cheetah, and so on. But all of the Predacons always seem to be these ginormous versions of whatever evil creatures they were. And I am curious in terms of what this whole movie's meant to be, because as far as I can tell, there hasn't been an awful lot of news or any information about it so far, even though it is to be coming out in about eight months' time, which is very worrying for a movie that's based in such a big universe, how they not given away anything at all. I understand that the past year also has been quite chaotic for most filming, but we've had leaks for various other ideas, including the Marvel Universe and some of the DC Universe, but there's been next to nothing I can really find about this, apart from a few here and there tidbits. So, for the most part, we have obviously the Max Maximals and the Predacons, but we've also got Terracons, which I'm not very clued up on, i got to do a bit more research, but they apparently are the main antagonists to the movie, so the Maximals and the Predacons are teaming up with the Autobots, possibly the Decepticons as well, to go against the Terracons, which is an amazing idea, 
but it sounds a very busy movie which may or may not actually be able to squeeze everything in in such a small time frame that may be two, maybe three hours at the most. I mean, obviously, for the team, we have Optimus Prime, we have Bumblebee, but we also have Mirage, who apparently is going to be a silver and blue 911 Porsche, which, for those of you wondering which version, because there are hundreds of, hundreds of them, I would say the one that's closest to the year in which this movie is meant to be set around, which is 1994, which is three years after I was born, which makes me feel really old. But there we go. We've also got RC, which is going to be a Ducati 916. Not a clued up motorcyclist myself, however, I do know Ducatis are quite popular in terms of bikers. It'd be interesting to see as to how she's going to be stylized. All I know for a fact is that she is going to be red with maybe some rose slash pink and white highlights, making her close to her feminine sort of styling. But other than that, I don't know as to how it's all going to work out for both her Ducati style and her robotic style. But Again, this is all speculation. We've also got Nightbird, who is going to be a Nissan GTR. She is apparently a Terracon with purplish grey in colour and is modernised version of G1 character of the same name. Face mask with robo looking hood, switch sides, allegiances are flexible. So, with that in mind, either she's going to be a baddie at the beginning, realising that she's done wrong and basically switches sides to the Autobots, or she's going to be sort of a grey area where she's only looking out for her own, her own self, sort of like Starscream. I always find Starscream the most frustrating character in every iteration of Transformers because to put it politely, he is basically Meg Megatron's bitch. Like, he is so disregarded in terms of any sort of respect, but doesn't really do much to earn the respect because he's such a snivelling, like, snidey little character that all he wants to do is basically surpass Megatron in every iteration. I mean, given the fact that I'm not saying every series is in continuity, but most series are linked to one another. After a while, you would think that as a henchman, you'd learn your lesson a little bit when it comes to not pissing off the boss. But again, this is obviously fiction. Like The bad guys don't always have the most brain cells. But there we go. Now, the leader of the Terracons is Scourge, which... I have come across before in my many years of collecting Transformers, as you can see by Bumblebee above my head. I do have probably a good hundred or so other various characters hidden away. But Scourge, I am pretty sure I've come across in other iterations, although I don't remember him being a Terracon. But again, this is all down to speculation of what little information I have so far. We've also got... Uh, Areza, I believe it's how it's pronounced, A-I-R-A-Z-O-R, -R, so it's Areza, I don't know, but is a robotic bird, rusty bird mode, steampunk S, silhouette in very weird world bird, but plated layered look, old, been here a bit, glowing eyes. So with that implied, one would assume that the Predacons and the Maximals and all that, they may not just randomly appear, they could have been on Earth all this time, but something awoke them to come out and either destroy the Earth, which is probably the most likely thing, or whatever random reason. But again, it's kind of curious as to how this is all going to play out, because this is based still within the whole timeline of the other Transformers movie. So, originally you had, obviously, Transformers, and you had... Oh, 
God, I can't remember the order of it now, but there was an established timeline already. Then Bumblebee came along and basically said that it was a prequel set in the 1980s. Not watched much of it, but not entirely sure whether to watch it just because I'm not a fan of prequels. Then, of course, we got this movie, which is a sequel to the prequel, which means it's still a prequel of sorts to the original timeline. <laughs> yes, I know. Head really does hurt trying to figure out prequels. So, it's one of these things that... How... How stupid or how... Gullible are the general public within this universe to disregard the whole idea of these Transformers not being around any sooner than 2007, which is when the first movie of Transformers came about. Because everyone just, act, obviously, they, I don't suppose, they did assume that they were going to get so far with this universe. But this is why I hate prequels. Because they, you establish the idea that nobody came here first of all, that there was no idea, that no one knew what the Transformers were, whatever. And then they go and create prequels, and then you sort of use that surprise-esque idea again that nobody's come across these things, which obviously they hadn't, because this is in the past. So then how do you justify the same shock going further in the... <laughs> but I digress. So the one thing I wanted to try and at least go over was some of the concept art, because I don't know if any of this concept art is actually true, or whether it's just artists that are just coming up with their own ideas but this is what I wanted to come across today to try and digress into sort of divulging ideas. So this is Rhinox. I mean the name's pretty much what it says on the tin. It's a rhino, it's a mechanical rhino, but there's nothing more we can say about it. But I do like how it's more rustic, it looks like it's been battle hardened, there's a lot of gold and sort of copper accents, which makes it look more steampunky, which is my favourite thing. I love steampunk stuff. I don't know why, but I love the mesh of modern tech with old styling looks. It just, it works. I don't know why, but it just works. But what else do we have, folks? So we got Bumblebee here as an actual photo of what he's going to be upgraded to, which makes him a bit more rustic. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more off-roading than usual, but I I really do like this version of Bumblebee. Although I do have like the more modern version of Bumblebee up above my head, I found him really clunky. I don't like the modern version of the car that he's based on because it's such a big and bulky car. I know it's a typical American thing to do with all your cars, but it just looks so bulky, which is kind of ironic coming from the fact that it's a robot that transforms into a car. I mean, the idea originally with the toys, I think, was the fact that they designed the robot first, then they designed the car, which is why a lot of the early on ones were so blocky. And then obviously they switched things about and designed the vehicle and then the robot, which makes more sense. So this is Scourge. Now, I have no idea how true this idea of how he's meant to look is supposed to be, but he does remind me a lot of Predator King from the Transformers Rise of Predacons animated series. There's like a fiery chest, he's very skeletal, it's very pointy, it's very sharp, it's very... Like, he looks menacing, but I'm curious as to what on earth earth he's going to be transforming into because if he doesn't have an alternate mode what is the point of him being any sort of bad guy that is Cybertronian if there is no actual alternate mode other than just looking like Freddy Krueger's nightmares times 10. I mean by what I can imagine is obviously he's got a blast cannon in one hand and then, from what I can see in the other, some sort of any cube, it was probably an Energon cube, or something else that's probably quite important to the movie. I just, I don't know. Like, it looks incredible, but it makes me wonder as to why. Like, what is he going to transform into? 
if it's not anything truly menacing if he doesn't transform at all. Now here we go, this is Optimus Primal. Again, this is just speculation. I have no idea if and how any of this is actual concept art or whether it's just artists trying to come up with their own interpretations of what's going on. But I like this. Like, this is what Optimus Primal should be. Yes, I know he's meant to look more animalistic than anything else, but it's the great mesh of the idea that he's still machinery but you can see how he's trying to be the animal that he is scanned get across i mean you got random tufts of fur but it looks it almost looks like he's wearing it as like clothing instead of it being a part of him it's kind of like a viking-esque idea where it's like to keep him warm or it's like it's just a way of dressing character but again, it's the styling, it's the colouring that makes it look steampunky. Which I got a funny feeling a lot of these characters are going to look a lot more sort of early age version of the Transformers. Less intricate and less di like less smooth machinery, less organised machinery, more clunky, more bulky stuff. Because this is like their ancestors, so they're going to be looking a bit more primitive in terms of how the design of the Cybertronians have evolved over the years. I mean, I can't even imagine they do evolve, but to a degree, I suppose, we evolve and technology upgrades over time in a way, I suppose, it is evolution. And then we got this guy here, which I'm assuming is what I tried to figure out earlier on, Air Razor, which, again, it's stunning work. Like... It's still mechanical, but it looks beautifully designed in terms of being the animal it should be. I'm assuming it's like meant to be a hawk of some kind, or maybe some sort of bird of prey. But it's the intricacies, the fact that there's individual blades for the feathers to make it look more like wings. I mean, they could have just done one solid wing and that would be it. But it's the intricacy of the split between the actual mechanics to make it look like feathers it's just glorious but what else can we show you folks i mean optimus prime there's not really much else we can say that like, it's optimus prime he looks like the g1 version of himself as he should i did like some of the versions that we got of optimus prime through the matt bale movies but there are some times where it just it frustrates me that while, yes, you try to modernise it, you sort of forget the history. It just ruins the concept of the character and where he came from. But... But there we go. I don't know what else to really add to today, I'm afraid, folks. This is just a small little rant of sorts to just try and have a little chat about the movie coming up so far and... See what's actually going to happen. I really do hope that we get a trailer at some point, and if we do, I'll happily review it and let you guys know. But this is it for today's little chat. I know it's short and sweet, but there isn't really much for me to go off, unfortunately. So if you did enjoy the video, or enjoy the stream, then come check me out on YouTube as well. Drop us a comment down below, and if you have any ideas of what I should be talking about next, Please let me know, there's only so much I can do and I'm happy to take any ideas. So, thanks for watching and see you soon. <laughs>